Teresa, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Are you All right, ready? I am. I'm so ready. Sister friends, are you ready? Grab your cup. Because it's time for a cup of soul. It is where wisdom is dropped, truth is shared, and there's enough love for a second helping. And you already know that second helping is for you. It is so good to be back for a cup of soul. And I yes, am excited, Candace, that we're back again. Get ready to dive mm-hmm. into some good stuff. Yep. Yes, it is. The, the weeks go by fast, which makes it even more exciting that we get to be back then. I know. So fast. So fast. All righty. What you got for us? So we're going to start off with our three fun questions before we get into this week's discussion. The first one is a little, it's for my ladies. Gentlemen, if you're listening, you can chime in, but this is for my ladies. How many pairs of shoes do you own? Give me an estimate. A range. <laughs> um. Oh. Mm. <laughs> so y'all know the range must be big if you can't answer yet. I'm just going to say 100. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's good. My range is not that high. <laughs> It'd probably be between 50 and 60, but not 100. Okay. Okay. All right, ladies. How many pairs of shoes do you own? The next question, uh, to this or that, win the lottery or work at your most perfect job? Work at my per- most perfect job. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. See, I this was a hard one. I want to say win the lottery, but I know eventually I'd end up working somewhere, even if it was for myself. So, yeah, and I just feel like if I won the lottery, it, it's not that I don't know how to manage money, but I'm not at the place to handle so much. I wouldn't know yeah. how to handle it. So I don't even right. want to, I don't even want that to be an issue. So I'll just stay right. my, my perfect job and it gives me just what I need. All right. Amen. And then the last one is Hawaii or Alaska. I've been to both. Okay. Alaska. Okay. And I've never been to either one, and I feel like Alaska. Like, I'd want to go to Hawaii because it's Hawaii, but just the pictures I've seen of Alaska, I feel like I want to, I don't know. I feel like Alaska is where I'd want to start. Well, maybe that's a girl's trip. I mean, let's make it happen, Kevin. Yeah. Um, all right, that's it. Those are the questions this week. Yes. And my favorite question is this. <laughs> Mug time. All right, so, sister and, friends. So I'll even do this. Okay. Did you purchase a mug? Or which mug this week did you find yourself grabbing? Like you was just drawn to it. Because there are times that I'm drawn to certain mugs. So Okay. I did not purchase a mug this week. I am mugless. I just put it out there. I it did not happen this week. But the one that I found myself going to is my um the one we got in Virginia, the prey mug. It just you know, before we get on Instagram in the morning, I have my own quiet time and that's usually when I drink my coffee. And I just I needed that. I needed that prey. And it's just that's all it says on it. There's no other words. There's no scriptures. It just says pray. So it was like a command. It was calling me this week. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Pray. Yeah. Um, No mug. I'm mugless. Um, Feel funny. Twitching. (laughs) Um, But, uh, you know, I try to match up the mugs with the week. Honestly, Mm -hmm. or not the week, excuse me, with every passage, honestly, that we're doing. I try to look in my cupboard to see what I have. And it kept going back to hope this week. I feel like every passage that we shared on our Instagram live was about hope. So I was pulling out anything on hope, choose hope. And and choose hope mug is 
is a big mug and it's blue and it says choose hope but i feel like that was the one i wanted to go to every single day but it was really about hope amen that's a good question i like that i like that spin on the mug question so ladies if you didn't buy a mug what did you drink out of this week yes we won't have you have a buying issue (laughs) our storage cabinet issue right right (laughs) right all right let's jump in um Mm -hmm. this this um series that we're doing we're talking about experiencing god's presence in a powerful way and um so we gave you the introduction so we're just we're gonna jump in and you know i really want to let you know this grab a piece of paper grab a pencil we are called to be doers of the word and god gives us to experience god there are things that we he's going to call us to do or ask us to do or even to experience god we're going to slow down and do the things that god has asked us to do so this this series we're going to and moving forward we're going to be doing the spiritual disciplines if we are to be doing them then we are going to do them. So get your pen and paper out. We want to share um, some things with you. Join us as we um, want to experience God this next co- this next week from Tuesday to Tuesday. So that's first. Grab your paper so we can talk about it. Because the first uh, topic for this week is come clean with him. So um, I am going to pray us in. And we're going to get started. Um, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for another week that we could come together, Lord. And, and Lord, um, without you, Lord, we could not do this. So first of all, I just want to praise you, Lord, for the work of your hands that is so faithful, that is always there, that has loved us, that has walked us through so many things, Lord. And, Lord, as we dive into um, experiencing your power and your presence, Lord, Lord, I thank you that I am she. I thank you that my sister friends are she. I thank you that Candace is she, that we are saved, that we're full of hope, and that we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. And daily you are cleaning us. Daily you are renewing us. And daily you are freshening us. And Lord, we get to walk in your identity as you are cleaning and restoring and redeeming, Lord. And I thank you for your healing power, Lord that as we uh, journey through your word, there's always healing, Lord, and spiritual growth, Lord, and and then also that you transform us by the renewing of our minds as we dig into the word. So thank you, Lord. I ask you to just bless this podcast, whomever is listening, and even as we do it, Lord, I just ask that um, you speak in a mighty way, Lord. Show us things in our lives that you're calling us through, through your word, Lord. We are here, we're open, and we're surrendering everything to you lord because we know it's going to be good in jesus name i pray amen 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 all right any thoughts before i jump in candace definitely grab that pen and paper um i think in addition to what Teresa said listen with an open heart you know we are all in an opportunity we all have an opportunity each day to walk into what God has for us. And I know I don't want to miss it. I know Teresa doesn't want to miss it. We don't want anyone to miss it. So listen okay. with an open heart. We pray that you are receptive and just know that this is really, we are so lucky and blessed and honored to be able to do this together. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of situations and circumstances where people don't have that. And I just, I do, I, it makes me feel like we're just extra special in that, in that regard. Right. Um, And again, grab your piece of paper. So I'm going to give you this. Our Girl Talk email is girltalkministries2 at gmail. Email email us. What we're going to give you starting in November, we're going to have uh, scriptures. So you want to get the PDF for it. And then we want to send out a weekly prayer for the next 12 weeks to go with our passages for the next two months. So I, we, I want you to write that down so you can get the PDF for the scriptures for November. And then starting the first of November, we'll be offering prayers. And we share that in the last one. So again, another reason, write down Girl Talk Ministries number two for um, those things. And also, we want your prayer requests. 
We want to be praying for you. We want to join with you. So as we're going through this podcast, we just want to um, recognize, be aware, and respond. And we share that piece in our introduction podcast. So we have this full uh, podcast today that we're going to talk about, Come Clean With Him. And the passage that we're going to start from, it, it, it'll hit you upside the head. Just going to go ahead and say it. It both it hit me and Candace, first of all. So it is yes. Psalms <laughs> 32.5. And I'm going to ask Candace to read it. And I love to hear Candace read it. I like her voice, for one. Um, that's creepy, I know. But um, nevertheless, Candace, will you read the passage to me? Will you read the passage to me? I will. Which translation do you think I should read from? Um, surprise me, and I can jump in on another one because that's another thing. We like to read from like three different translations so that um, we really hear the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is saying. So whatever ones you want to surprise me with, go okay. for it. Okay. I will start with the Amplified Version. Okay. And it says, we are in Psalms 32, <clears throat> excuse me, 3 through 5. When I kept silent about my sin, my body wasted through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, your hand of displeasure <clears throat> was heavy upon me. My energy, vitality, strength was drained away as with the burning heat of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not hide my wickedness. I said, I will confess all my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Oh. I don't even know what to say on that translation, because I didn't read that one earlier. I know you like passion. Will you read it to us out of the passion translation? Yes, yes, I will. Before I confessed my sins, I kept it all inside. My dishonesty devastated my inner life, causing my life to be filled with frustration, irrepressible anguish, and misery. The pain never let up, for your hand of conviction was heavy on my heart. My strength was sapped. My inner life dried up like a spiritual drought within my soul. Then I finally admitted to you all my sins, refusing to hide them any longer. I said, my life-giving God, I will openly acknowledge my evil actions and you forgave me. All at once, the guilt of my sin washed away and all my pain disappeared. Oof. Like, you know, oh, like, you know, there's this, <laughs> it's just a powerful passage. Do you, do you yeah. want to read another one? Yeah, I'll go to <clears throat> my, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, guys. I will go to um, NIV, which is the, what my Bible translation is, my physical Bible. And it says, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. <sighs> Every translation is heavy. like it, And it's a full, it's a full circle, so... Yeah. yeah, you know, because for a minute, you know, I wanted to hesitate. And do I do you say all the verses? Because, you know, so many stand out. Three stands out. And then there's four and five, like, which is such a good perspective. So, like, here it is. Here it is. David was in distress. Okay? Let's just go ahead and say that. And David was acknowledging his sin, right? And, um, and then... Not only that, like you said, full circle, then he acknowledges the greatness of God's forgiveness. Right. When we, children of God, hide our sins, it eats away at us. Yes. It eats away at us. And we we felt like we feel awful when it eats away. We, you know, we, we become misguided by guilt and shame that we don't even know honestly who to trust and we know yeah. and even that we and i'm gonna go to this part sometimes we deal with trust and this is way out left field and i'm gonna have to bring it back sometimes our trust we don't trust people because we don't even trust ourselves <clears throat> because that guilt is so heavy 
And so we know that we're not what what we're made to be, right? Like you, oh, this is not like you are walking with the Lord and you're like, this is not what I'm supposed to be. Oh my goodness, like it's heavy and it eats away at us because sin is death. Mm -hmm. Think about it, sin is death. And we know how life should feel. It should be good, it should feel good. It should feel um, refreshed, it should feel renewed. And who don't like to be clean? Like after reading them, I just feel like I'm dirty. <laughs> You know right. what I mean? Like, right. And that's by your own volition. You know, and we've yeah. talked about it in previous episodes. Yes, we know that we're going to go through things, but there's a difference of you walking through something because a situation has presented itself versus mm -hmm. you created that situation. And in each translation is, is ugly. I have finger quotes that you can't see. Your bones wasted away. Your inner life was devastated. Dishonesty ate you up, like groaning, like none of these adjectives are good. No. And it was all because, and each translation says, when I, when mm -hmm. I kept silent, when I was dishonest, before I confessed my sins. So there's that difference of living in the eye of you versus handing it over to God to truly experience him in that powerful way. And the cleanliness that happens, the... I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I love a good shower. Sometimes I'll just take a shower just because they feel nice. Right. You got your loofah, your soap, it smells good. Like, because I just feel like having a good shower right now because I like how it feels. Yeah. Or uh, when you pull out those clothes, those freshly laundered clothes, and mm -hmm. like you have that sheet, that dryer sheet, or your when you wash your sheets or a blanket and you hold it up, I'm going to be honest with you, the smelling of a baby after its bath, like, oh. Oh, baby smell. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I think of this, and Candace, if you'll read again, Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to pull um, it up right now. All right. But, you know, literally the incredible joy of experiencing God's cleaning in our hearts and our minds and our bodies and here it is here's david in distress and he's he's realizing like I, i'm i'm stained i'm not clean and if i am going to uh walk this out if we embrace verse five which is really simple uh clearing the way literally like i got to i have to clear the way so that i acknowledge my sin to you uh, and my iniquities that I, I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord and you forgave me. So I think I'm going to show you in Ezekiel another thing where God promised the day that he would completely purify us. It's such a great example. I'll be quiet. Will you real. read it again, Ezekiel? Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. Okay, so I want to make sure I have it right. And it's a prophet, by the way. <clears throat> it is. You guys know how I feel about the prophets. Yes. And they're my favorite. So the NIV says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Mm. Mm. Man, that's like both, like both passages are just so rich. Like, and that's just from a sprinkle of his water. Right? Can you imagine what happens when you immerse yourself right. in his water? And go back to it. Consider the way sin has soiled all of us. Okay, think about it. And here it is. God's promise just washed it out just like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think mm -hmm. of our bodies, like you said. And let's be real. There's times our bodies bear the filth of sin. We violate our bodies. Our bodies are a temple of the living God. Right. So yes. I think about first thing I think about is sexual morality and and not just literally, you know, being in that, but let's be real women watch porn women get caught up in things they shouldn't get caught in uh, maybe marriage outside sex outside of marriage um though we have to be real about those we truly have to be real about sexual morality 
And you think about it, even when other um, offenses come to our bodies, we are staying with shame that soap can't remove. Like Candace right. said, I love that shower, but there are some things that cannot be removed. And the only Jesus in this passage, he tells us only Jesus can erase the guilt and the shame that has polluted our bodies. Mm -hmm. Literally, you think mm -hmm. about it. God puts the condemnation of or the punishment of sin on the shoulders of Jesus. Come on mm. now. Yes. Long, and it's go ahead. Standing. You know, we'll get that quick fix. I mean, if mm -hmm. we want to use the shower as the example, that's going to keep me clean until I go outside again. And then I go outside and I'm going to be dirty again. Yeah. And I'm going to have to shower again. But the sprinkle, just the sprinkle from him, it not only does it clean you, but it washes you away. Mm. So it's like, it, in my mind, I think of like a drain, how it, and it goes down the drain and it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. But only, like you said, only Jesus can do that. I can't do that by myself. Right. And God promised us a redeemer to clean yeah. us. So you don't have to sit with this. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit with this. You and and okay, let's go back to experiencing God's presence. How many times do you not go into his presence because you feel unclean? You don't you don't want to go to God because you messed up again. I think of Isaiah, which is another prophet, right, Candace? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isaiah 1 18. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And he frees us from all the shame by purifying us and declaring us holy. So you can come to him. You can ask him. And that's him. a huge connection because there's no way I could experience God if mm -hmm. all I'm thinking about is my shame of what I've done. Yeah. You just, you can't. No. You wouldn't even, he could be standing right in front of you and you wouldn't see him because your head would be hung so low because all you're thinking about is the shame of, of the situation or the choice. Right. And you said it, our minds aren't clean. So let's clean our minds. Mm -hmm. Anything we value more higher than God becomes an idol. And honestly, idols, evil thoughts, wrong attitudes contaminate our minds. And not knowing the truth for those wrongful thoughts contaminate our minds. So if I don't go to the Lord, well, he doesn't want to talk to me. I know the Lord don't love me no more. Really? Is that what the word of the Lord says? Mm -hmm. I know he can't forgive me. I messed up again. It's not what he mm -hmm. says. And often we feel a tra a trapped by accus accusatory words that we say over ourselves are literally the cycle that keeps filtering through our minds. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. I, I, I should have did this. I should have went to college back then. I should have did this over here. And literally our minds are just getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier and dirtier where we just saw him before he's cleansed us of those things and declared us holy. Mm -hmm. And we can't change our thoughts, but God can. Right. And, and he offers us the opportunity to renew our minds. Yes, he and does. I think idols are sneaky and tricky because anything that is in between you and God, that thing is an idol. Yeah. And it can be what you think is good. Oh, I've been working all these hours of overtime. You know, the Lord is blessing me. Well, if that overtime is keeping you from God and you're using that as a reason, that is an idol and we need to work on that. Girl. What like we mean? have to be honest about idols, things that we have decided that take a different ranking in our life mm. is an idol. That could be your marriage. That could be your prodigal son or daughter. That could be healing in your body. Anything that you've decided is greater than or takes a higher precedence is an idol. Girl, what you, you saying? You cannot experience him if you are thinking and focusing on those idols. Yeah. And you like you're so true because when you feel downcasted, when you feel like you're wasting away, like here was David, he was in distress. Or maybe it's depression all day long, and then at night your heart is so heavy. 
so many people struggle with depression. That's literally what happens. They're depressed all day, and then at night, their heart is so heavy, they feel drained, and literally, they can't go to sleep. Literally, you can't go to sleep. And this is where you need to stop and search your heart for the missed sins. Like, you need to acknowledge the sin to God uncover your iniquities he's david said it he said i said i will confess my transgressions to the lord and what he said is and you forgave the guilt of my sin after you confess your transgression to the lord it's what it says you're repenting he will forgive you and then you can rest when it literally you can rest because now you're clean and do you have might have to do this every day? Yeah. For sure. And that's okay. Let's just put that out there. It's not not that God can't do a one and done. That's not what we're saying. Right. But for us to believe it, it may take a couple, we may need to work through it. But the process, just we were like talking about a shower. Sometimes the best part of the shower is the showering. The ING, the soap, the bubbles, the smell. It's the process of being clean that we enjoy because we know the end result is going to be that I'm clean. So if you are in process of, we celebrate you, we're here with you, we're praying with you because that is amazing. You're in the process of, own that. Yeah. Own that. Yeah. Um, Titus 3 5 says, He saves us through the washing of rebirth and renew, renewal by the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 and 8, just a little bit, A. I'll say part A of Acts 1 and 8A. It says the Holy Spirit will fill you. The Holy Spirit washes us, our bodies, our minds, our hearts, and our soul. Kind of like Kenneth says, it is the washing or the showering that really does it. So God wants to renew us. Come to him with a clean heart. And so that's the next one is, is a clean heart. Here we are. You know, if we go back to the passage, let me go back to the passage where he says, um, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquities I do not hide. I said, I will confess my transgression. Here, that confessing to clean your heart. When the Pharisees asked uh, Jesus, why disciples didn't follow the rules of the the cleaning. Jesus explained the uncleaning comes from within. Mm-hmm. Candace, will you turn to Mark 7, 20, Mark 7, 20 to 23? So think about it. Jesus explained that the uncleansing, uncleansing comes from within. And so sometimes we do. You watch shows and, and sometimes... TV shows. I'm totally going way left with this, but you watch. You will watch a TV show and say they did something. What do they do? They go to the shower like it's gonna wash away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can't. We're not on television. We wasn't created that. We're created to be with the Lord. We're created to depend on Him. We're created to experience Him. So Jesus explains the uncleanliness comes from within, and Candace is gonna read Mark seven. 20 through 23. He added, words and deeds pollute a person, not food. Evil originates, sorry guys, evil originates from inside a person. Coming out of a human heart are evil schemes, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, treachery, debauchery, jealousy, slander, arrogance, and recklessness. All these corrupt things emerge from within and constantly defile a person. So a sin originates in our hearts. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Sin lives inside of us. So we have to acknowledge the truth before God. We have to confess before God. And he invites us to him so that he can purify us. You know, and he already knew it was there. Like, that's the thing. <clears throat> I mean, I understand shame. I understand how that works. But like, not only is he a gracious father, not only did he send his sons down, he did all these amazing things. He knew it was there, but is still offering true repentance 
and to be washed clean. Take it. Take it. It is just like whatever your sweet treat is that you like, it is looking at you. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> Take it. Take it like David did in Psalms 51.10. Here's what da- David prayed. And we can pray the same prayer that David prayed. Psalms 51.10 says, Create in me a pure heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I'm going to add this. Every single day, Lord. Because we're in a battle. Every day I get up, I am in a battle. So I have to understand, I am on the battlefield. So every day I want to say, oh, girl, I just got something. Create in me a pure heart, oh, Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. That's it, Candace, right there. Mm -hmm. All right? Like, literally, you can pray that every single day. Create Mm -hmm. in me a pure heart, oh, Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And literally, Mm -hmm. like, you can look in the Bible over and over and over in the Bible. It describes that we can receive a cleansing from the Lord through his saving power of Jesus' death and his resurrection. Because I'll give you this, Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled clean, excuse me, sprinkled to cleanse us, from the guilt conscience, having our bodies washed with pure water. I'm just going to say this. You don't have to wait. Now is your time. Now is your time. Now is your time. So what me and Candace did is, and something you're going to see in our podcast we're going to be, we're not going to talk about it. We're going to be doers of it. We're going to be about our business, be about the father's business. And Isn't that a song? Don't talk about it, be about it. I, I think know. so. Maybe I, I was, wanted to break out was, something. Days. I don't know. It's okay. Yeah. Forgive me. Y'all. I, just, I wanted to rap for a minute, right? Right. I think it is. Don't talk about it, but be about it. Okay. Somebody, right? you know what we're saying. Don't talk about it. Let's be about it. How we going to be about it? We're going to do the se- the spiritual disciplines that we talked about. So we put some things together to help you on this journey. All right? And so, um, and Candace is going to jump in and help me. I'm going to list and we're going to, we got, we, we, we got. <laughs> we have some <laughs> things that will help you on this journey. Because I'm not going to just, we don't want to just throw this information out there. One thing is is this. This is a cup of soap. We want to fill your cup up that it overflows. So we're giving you information that you can go back. We've we've listed and read several passages in this podcast. Take those if you need to and read them. Spend yes. time with them so that the Lord, wherever you are hiding, whatever needs to be clean, Lord, I want it clean, like David said. Uh, creating me a pure heart, Lord, by reading your word every day, the renewing of my spirit within me. So you have passages, just so you know. So Mm -hmm. we put together the spiritual disciplines that we wanted to take and and do over the next, from Tuesday to Tuesday until you get another list. So that's why we want you to grab paper so it's still time. Grab the paper. We're going to share our list. We are doing it with you. We want to experience the Lord in the most powerful way. So we're going to do it as well. All right. Mm -hmm. We're recognizing, we're coming, our awareness, and then we're responding. So here it is. Our worship song for the next week. Who is it, Candace? It's Natalie Grant. And it's called, I'm looking at my papers, guys. It's called Clean. Yes. Natalie Grant Clean. And so what we're going to do is... We, like Teresa said, we're doing it with you. So we're going to share. Social media is how we can connect. Let's use our powers for good. Yes. So I'm going to challenge you. We're going to challenge you, if that's the right word. Share this song on social media. You don't got to be with people all in your business. Just share a song and say, take a listen. If you've got somebody in your life, whatever that looks like, that will be our worship song for the week. Um, And go to the lyrics of it. Um, I know on YouTube you can get, like, the lyric video. And read the lyrics of the song. Oh, yes. Natalie Grant, Clean. 
Okay. Um, yes, just get ready. I know you're going to fall out of your chair on this one. But we're going to fast. Join mm-hmm. us on Wednesday. We're going to fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So hold up. Fasting, just to give you a quick s- snippet of what fasting is, instead of having food, let's say you give up lunchtime, or let's say whatever works for you during that time in fasting, because health-wise, you, I want you to honor what the doctor has put in place. So let's say you decide, you know what, I'm just having a salad, and today I'm not having meat. Let's just say that's what it is. That's your fast, because you have to watch what you're doing. Just an example. But during that time, lunchtime, you're going to pull out your Bible and you're going to spend time reading the word. So my challenge to you is to read all of Psalms 32. You can read it all week if you want, but during that time, during that time of fasting, read all of Psalms 2, 32, underline, pick out words, pray, ask God, what is he saying to you? You have from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., okay? Um, Communion, you want to share about that one, Candace? Yeah, so the next one is communion, and that will be on Friday. Mm-hmm. Now, later on in this series, we will get more in depth, but I guess my piece of advice on this one is don't make it complicated. Jesus didn't make it complicated. You were, If you have a cheese it that is okay. If you've got a piece of bread, that is okay. Communion is just that act of communing, which is coming together. He broke his body, his blood was shed, and we are honoring what he did for us during his time here, during our time, and what that means to be connected to him. So Mm -hmm. pick a time, any time. It could be in the morning, during your quiet time. It could be at the end of the night. But you are being intentional. That is definitely the heart behind it, being intentional and honoring what he did for you on that cross today and how it affects us today because we it, it, it wasn't just for the yesterdays it's for right now mm-hmm. and if you want to know the scripture because it's important for you to know the scripture it's not just important for your pastor to have that passage it's for you too so here's the passage you're going to go to first corinthians 11 23 through 26 while you're doing it you read that passage okay and it, mm-hmm. this scripture is about the body and the blood of Jesus. Right. And then the next one is prayer and meditation. Mm-hmm. So we thought it would be 15 minutes a day is girl talk tagline. So we're not going to just talk about it. We're going to be about it. So we're going to take 15 minutes of prayer and we're going to take 15 minutes of meditation. Mm-hmm. Our prayers this week during this will be prayers of Thanksgiving specifically. Spend 15 minutes thanking God for everything. And you can see that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Give thanks for everything. I'm talking the hair tie in your hair, the gas in your car. It doesn't matter. We want to cultivate, to grow gratefulness and thankfulness because that one keeps those idols at bay. And two, keeps God in his rightful position of we could not be, do, say, have anything without him. And and if 15 minutes is hard for you, that's okay. That means we know we're doing what we're supposed to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. And then after the 15 minutes of prayers of Thanksgiving, 15 minutes of meditation. Because a lot of times we will ask for God to do things and then we just keep talking. And then we just keep talking. So take 15 minutes and yield pause rest reflect whatever that looks like but literally opening up yourself to go god i want to experience you in this moment how you need me to experience you what do you have for me in this moment and just quiet all of those spaces and places and listen for the lord Mm -hmm. and you honestly could use the one that we pray was david said oh lord give me a clean heart just sit with that when you're yielding Start off saying that, create in me a pure heart, O Lord, and renew my steadfast spirit within you, and just yield to that. Just yield to that. That's Psalms 5110. Mm -hmm. Mm. So the next one of our spiritual disciplines is Bible study, Bible reading, uh, memorization. 
And so again, I want you to read, a good thing would be to read all of Psalms 28, excuse me, 32. No, 32. Mm -hmm. 32, all right? Then if you join us on um, our Instagram Live or if you are on, or if you're in the group, Girl Squad, we'll have a list that we read passages every day, 15 minutes in the Word. Go to that list and read those words. Go read those passages each day. Find a, uh, find a scripture to meditate on for the whole week. Maybe one of these spoke to you. Get that scripture, meditate on it, and memorize it. Write on a card and take it with you. Now you have his word. Even if you want to take Psalms 51, <clears throat> which was a prayer that David did, but you want it, like, I like that. That's I need that. Then write on an index card, write, write on your hand if you have to. Psalms 51.10, create in me a pure heart, Lord. Create in me a pure heart, O Lord, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. But find a verse and start writing it on the tablet of your heart. And so my <laughs> challenge again is to read Psalms 32. Read all of it. Check, check, and check. Right, Candace? Mm -hmm. I think we hit them all. And then I think fellowship, we talked about as a spiritual discipline. And we're all everywhere as far as physically located, but this is fellowship. So, yeah. yes, I mean, go to church. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. But this, too, is fellowship because we want we want to know. I want to know what he says to you when you're quiet time. I'm going to be honest. Please share. Please email. Please tag. Please message us. Because he's going to reveal something to you that we all could benefit from. And that's exciting. I already know it. God is going to say something to you. And it is going to be so good. And it's going to be so on point for where you are. That is, you're going to be bursting at the seams to share. Share it. That's mm. fellowship. We are better together. Community is strength. We cannot do this without each other. Right. So I'm going to be sharing mine. Teresa's going to be sharing hers. You need to share yours with us too. Yes. What's so beautiful about Psalms 32, we read three through five and it was literally beautiful, but I want to drop down to 30, I mean, 32, eight, Psalms 32, eight. And it says this, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eyes on you. And so here you need direction in your life. You're not sure about your salvation. God is willing to teach you and instruct you and guide you. The promises in his text that you will be reading is God's provision for all of us willing to receive him by faith and follow his lead. That's the only way. He's saying, come to me. You don't have to wait, literally. And we wanted to give you those steps to help you. And if you look at this verse, it says this, I'll read it to you again. I will instruct you, I will teach you in the way you should go, I will counsel you with my eyes on you. Now you don't have to figure it out. If you're willing to be taught by him and follow him, he will instruct you, he will teach you in the way you should go, and he will counsel you with his eyes on you. It is God's desire to teach all his children in the way to go. And he wants to show them, we just have to be submissive to him or surrender to him and be obedient to the word and his authority. And as believers, we must seek and obey with humbleness and live in a holy. This is a daily walk of integrity, honestly. Like, to be honest in us dealing with one another, like I said, it's a battle. How do I go out in this battle? Well, I have all my armor on now going out in the battle. There might be somebody you meet at the store and they're struggling. God, Acts 1 and 8 says the Holy Spirit will fill you and you will be a witness. You're going to be a witness. It's going to be a Christian. It's going to be a non-believer. And it's going to be somebody you don't know. But God is going to be right there. And no, God didn't, did not save us so that we could live here as we please. So think about that. There's a standard of living for us as Christians. And it's not hard. He's going to teach you. He's going to instruct you, he's going to show you the way to go, and he's going to counsel you, and he's got his eyes on you. And guess what? Directions are important because we always getting lost. Many times we are lost 
And listen, he don't even want, he's going to make sure you don't need a GPS. He's giving you the GPS. Just pull it out and open it, right? Mm -hmm. Just pull it out and open it. It's a gift. Mm. So here it is. Here's the come to Jesus moment, right? I'm going to go back to what I read earlier. Consider the ways that sin has soiled us. Literally, we've left that. And it feels so good in just doing this whole podcast that we know God's promises just washed over us and just preparing for the next coming week, honestly, literally. Like, come. In the spirit of humility and, this, and repentance, we can pray and, and follow what God has given us. Even with David, literally, if we read Psalms 51, verse 2 and 7, it says, Wash away all my iniquities and clean me from my sins. Clean me with the hiccups. I always like to hiccup on that. And I will be clean. <laughs> Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Here we are. And literally, David prayed these words after Nathan confronted him regarding his adultery with um, Bathsheba. And he <laughs> murdered her husband. Check that out. And just think about it. The mercy that the Lord shows you in your sins will be the same mercy you show someone else. Yes. That's called multiplication. Our God is a God about multiplication. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. So this cleansing that you receive is the forgiveness and the deliverance from shame. And it awakens all who comes to Jesus in repentance and faith. Girl, we're going to be woke we're going to experience the powers of the Lord. We, he's mm, come clean with him. We're going to come clean with him for the next seven days. Are you going to join us? Mm, yes. Yes, you are. I answered for you. <laughs> All righty. There we are. are. There we are. I, I you know, I, I don't even have anything else to say, Candace. Because <sighs> it's just going to be a good week. God is good. It is. It is. Get in your word, pray, seek the Lord's face for his promises to teach you, instruct you, and keep a watchful eye over you. All I can say is God bless. And Candace is going to pray us out because. That's it. Yep. Get excited. Get a friend. Get a buddy. And remember, we're here. We say it every week, but it's so true. You've got the email. You know our names, DM, IM, LM, whatever it is called. Reach in, reach out, all the things, all the things, because I need you. We need you. So let's let's do this together. And one more thing. Even if you're confused about it and you're like, that's a lot, still reach out. We, both of us are would love to talk to you and help you with this. If you're going, I don't even know how to do this and where to begin, and that seems like complicated. Girl, we can slow it down for you. Right. Reach out. We want you to know that God loves you and God has his eyes on you and he has given us that Holy Spirit that filled us. He has given us that we have this longing and this desire to share the word of God and to make sure that you're not stumbling and falling and we're watching you. So sister friend, if you have stumbled and fall, I want you to stand up. God has reached his hand out and me and Candace are reaching our hands out for you to help you up. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. I will be quiet for real. I'm going to be quiet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Heavenly Father, the only thing I feel in my spirit to say is just yes. That we're saying yes to you. That this is an opportunity again to, to be about your business. To walk it out. To pray it out. To fellowship. To meditate. To read your word. To take communion. To worship. Like we have the opportunity at this table in, in this moment with each other to do all of the things. Every single one of them. And it is exciting. It is uplifting. It is encouraging. Because again, just the sprinkle of your water, the very drips of your water washes, us, washes it away and makes us clean. So not only are we going to receive 
air sprinkle, but we're jumping in. We are immersing ourselves in the living water, just like it says in Psalms 4-1, by the stream, that we are jumping in and covering ourselves in you, that these spiritual disciplines are about experiencing you in a powerful way, not a passive way, not a way just to gather information and hold on to it, but in a powerful way so that it comes out, it overflows at the grocery store, at home, in our marriage, yes. at work, but even with you in the closet, Father, yes. that it is coming out of us that we can come clean and know what you've intended for us will be. Where you've called us, we will go. What you fashioned us, we will do. And we just say thank you. We say thank you. So I want to rebuke right now any notions of discouragement, any notions of I can't, any contracts that are made with the enemy right now that will stop. I want to rebuke any idols that are standing in the way. There will be nothing before you. You yes. are at the center. Jesus at the center of it all. And we are going to revel in that. We are going to embrace that. And we are going to walk it out. And I am so excited. I am so Woo! excited for the victories that will come. Yes. I'm so excited for the revelations that are going to come, for the answers to prayer, for the, the exhortation, for the identity seek. I'm so I know that that is the God we serve and uh -huh. that is what he's going to do for each one of his daughters. So we thank you for this opportunity, this platform, this time, this place that we were fashioned for now. And we're going to say yes to you just in the way that you said yes to us. In Jesus name, we declare it to be true. It shall be. Amen. Yes. Jesus. My cup is so full. I'm handing it to another sister friend. Amen. Thanks, Candace, for an awesome cup of soul. Amen, ladies. Can't wait for this week. I can't wait because we get to experience the Lord every single day of the week. Have a great week, and we'll see you next episode of Cup of Soul. Bye, friends. Bye.